If you've been considering the Samsung Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360 or the Galaxy Book 5 Pro or even the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra, this is the video for you. I have spent about six months with some of the models, almost a year uh, with the other being the Book 4 Ultra, and I have run these through a lot of different tests, daily user experience, and I'm going to help you make the correct buying decision for your needs based on performance, usability, upgrade path, and functionality. So if you're looking to buy one of these laptops, you found the right video. Keep in mind, this video is sponsored by Samsung. However, they did not promote me with any talking points or make me change this video in any way before posting. So these are my raw, authentic thoughts on the Samsung Galaxy Book Series and which one I would purchase. Now, first and foremost, the one thing that I really want to point out is that the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360, out of the three laptops that I'm talking about here today, is the only one that is pen compatible. The Book 4 Ultra and the Book 5 Pro are not pen compatible. So if you're a digital artist, you're going to want to lean towards the Book 5 Pro 360 or the Book 5 360. Not to throw in too many options, but the Book 5 360 is a more affordable uh, version of the Book 5 Pro 360. And so if you're on a budget, that's still a great device, but I'm trying to keep it here at these three devices. Um, so if you see super thin and light chassis, these continue to be the Windows de facto premium laptop. This is, of course, a two-in-one pen compatible. And you can see so thin and light. This is the dedicated GPU equipped Book 4 Ultra. So if you're looking for a little bit more kick in your daily workflow, if you have a lot of heavy graphics oriented tasks, be motion design or even some 3D modeling or a little bit more intense video editing, say 4K or 6K, the Book 4 Ultra is definitely the one you're going to want to consider. However, there are some reasons that you would go ahead and pick the Book 5 Pro over the Book 5 Pro 360. So I'm gonna get into that here in just a moment. But first and foremost, if you are somebody considering using the Book 5 Pro 360, there is something I wanna point out in regards to the pen compatibility. Now, it is a great pen. And one of the great things I love about it is that you do not have to keep it charged. It automatically uh, stays ready to go and you never have to charge it. That is probably one of the biggest benefits I see because so many times when I'm using devices with pen compatibility, I forget to charge the pen and therefore I end up with a dead pen. Super frustrating. I have not touched this specific pen in a few months. I have a few S pens in the studio here, but I made sure I grabbed the one that had been like sitting in a box somewhere and I pulled it out and it's still good to go. Now, one thing I do not like about it though, however, is the fact that if you watch when I go to push on the screen and like maybe add some art or something, it's not there, but if I were going to, um, you can see that the screen falls over pretty easily with a nice push. So if you're going to be using this device, pen compatibility, I would support behind the screen and use it that way or turn it into, you know, tent mode and you can use it in tent mode. That's always helpful. Um, or go ahead and fold it completely over and use it as a tablet mode. Now, there are some people who say, and I'd be one of those people, that using something in tablet mode is a little bit annoying in regards to removing the access to your shortcuts on the keyboard deck. So if you're somebody who's constantly looking to use the shortcuts on the keyboard deck, then you wanna use it in this mode and hold your hand behind it. Okay, now let's talk about the different models here, the configurations, and why I would encourage you to choose the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro versus the Pro 360. Now, even if you're somebody who's looking for pen compatibility, uh, this may be something that you might want to consider. So if you look at the specs online, the Pro 360 only comes in a 16 gig RAM variant. And these are not upgradable post-purchase. The upgrade path, you can upgrade uh, internal storage, but you cannot upgrade the RAM. The straight Book 5 Pro, which is not pen compatible, but does have a touch screen, can be upgraded to 32 gigs of RAM. Now, if you're somebody working inside of Photoshop, if you're doing some video editing on the device, that RAM is very helpful. And if you're also, if you're somebody who often is doing a lot of multitasking, you're definitely going to want to consider getting the Book 5 Pro with that 32 gigs of RAM. Now, you can see in the Photoshop benchmark results, I'll pull that up on the screen, that they're pretty much neck and neck at 16 gigs. Both the models that I tested were 16 gigs of RAM, and they're pretty close. Uh, so that 
32 gig upgrade will give you a little bit of boost inside of Photoshop. Now, let's go ahead and switch over to the book for Ultra and talk about my recommendation. Now, this does come in two configurations. You can get it in RTX 4060 or 4070, but keep in mind, both of those models, you're maxing yourself out at a maximum graphics power of 80 watts. So that RTX 4060 or 4070 is not the equivalent performance capability of putting that RTX 4060 or 4070 inside something like the coveted Lenovo Legion Pro 5i, which is the, kind of, in my opinion, the de facto beast gaming laptop on a budget. Okay, so when you buy the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra, you're buying the premium laptop, the incredible super color accurate screen, the large, large, glass trackpad. I mean, absolutely beautiful. Both these laptops, you can see how massive these trackpads are. Uh, and it's, it's such a thin form factor. I mean, you just look at the form factor, how thin this is. It's absolutely amazing how thin this device is. So when you buy this device, you're buying the total package and therefore not as much wattage performance because in order to keep this cool, that GPU can't run at full wattage capability. So for example, this one runs at a maximum graphics power of 80 watts, 140 watts of maximum graphics power for the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i, and 175 watts of maximum graphics power for the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i. Now, I say all that to say, in regards to people asking, okay, well, what about the latest Book 5 Ultra? That hasn't released yet. We know that RTX 50 series is out. What should we do, Ben? Should we wait around for RTX 50 series? Should we pull the trigger on one now? Give us your opinion. Okay, so in my opinion, we're gonna see probably a seven to 15% bump in performance between the Book 4 and the Book 5 Ultra. Now, again, I have not tested it. That is just a general observation based on what performance I'm seeing in laptops where I have tested 50 series. And so if you're looking to pull the trigger on a Book 4 Ultra and you're wondering, oh, should I wait? I personally, if I was gonna buy one of these and I was committed to this model and it was really my only decision was, should I wait for the new one or should I buy one now? I would go for this one and especially if you can find it on sale. That's a great opportunity. And if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability when you're watching this video, you head down in the description below and click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. So I'm so grateful when you all use those links. But that's my opinion. Uh, I have not seen substantial enough increases in performance on a lot of 50 series devices for me to be like, I would wait around for 50 series. So definitely keep that in mind. But as we're looking at this device, uh, keep in mind, remember, it is touchscreen, but it is not pen compatible. Earlier, I mentioned the color accurate display. These are absolutely fantastic in regards to color accuracy. We have 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 98% DCI-P3. Absolutely incredible, with a Delta E of less than two for all of the devices. So no matter if you pick the Pro, the Pro 360, or the Ultra, you're getting fantastic color accuracy and color gamut range. One thing I think is really cool on these devices is the rounded edge here. You can see that a lot of screens, they cut it as a sharp 90 degree angle. I think it looks really cool with that rounded edge. It's just a nice little nod to uh, some quality uh, implement implementations on the Galaxy Book 5 and Book 4 series. Now, one thing I will complain about is the uh, glossy display. If you guys have watched my channel for a long time, you know I'm not a fan of glossy displays. They tend to be very reflective, but one thing that I will point out about the book Galaxy Book series is that they have an anti-reflective coating that they've put onto this glossy display. So you can see there that there is some reflection, uh, but it's a little bit more muted than other displays tend to be. And so keep that in mind that this is one of the more premium anti-reflective oriented screens uh, that you can get on the market. Let's transition to looking at the keyboard and the trackpad. You can see that we have the exact same keyboard no matter if you choose the Book 3, the Book, the Pro, whoo, the Pro 360 or the Ultra low profile, quiet keyboard, and even quieter trackpad. It is a manual click trackpad, which I really like. I'm still not sold on Windows haptic trackpads. You're st I'm still, mm, 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 mm. still not there. I'm still not feeling it. So for me, manual click trackpads are still the way to go on the Windows devices. Uh, I've, I've had one or two that I really liked, but overall manual is, is my opinion the way to go. Really quiet, really nice press. So as far as using this in a quiet office setting, you're not gonna have it an annoying device. Here's a sample of the audio on just one of the devices since they're all the same. So you can hear what the keyboard and trackpad sound like.
And of course, uh, there is a webcam on the top bezel of each one. Here's a webcam of each of them so you can see and hear for yourself. This is the webcam on the Samsung Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Samsung Galaxy Book 5 Pro and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Let's talk about the port connectivity on the Book 5 Pro 360 as well as the Book 4 Ultra. So HDMI, two USB type C's. Now you can see the indication these are Thunderbolt on the left side panel, It'll be Thunderbolt four ports. And then we flip it over and you can see the exact same ports, micro SD card reader, USB-A and headphone jack. So some good flexibility in the connectivity. I wish that this was a full size SD card reader, but you can't win them all. So I guess we'll just deal with it, unfortunately. Gotta deal with it. There are two elements that are wildly impressive to me on the Galaxy Book series. And that would be the battery life and the thermal management, which both kind of go hand in hand, which is pretty cool. So when we look at the thermal management on all the three of the devices, they remain cool and quiet under heavy load, which is very impressive. Now, is this the absolute fastest laptop? Does it have the highest benchmark scores? Does it have the fastest export times out of every device that I've tested? No, but it is quiet and it does run cool, which to me has its own value if that is something that you are specifically looking for. And for me, a lot of times I do value that, especially if I'm trying to record live or edit or stay quiet or just not want my computer to get too hot on my lap. It is very valuable to me. Now, the second thing would be battery life. These battery life specifically on the Pro and the Pro 360 are amazing. Up to 18 hours of battery life for both of those devices and then over nine hours of battery life for the Book 4 Ultra with the dedicated GPU. And when it comes to the system, you can't turn off the dedicated GPU. It's something that's always running. And so that is a really nice value that you can still get nine hours of battery battery life with that you know dedicated GPU not being able to be shut off in the system setting. So there's not some sort of like muck switch or switch over to integrated graphics only. It's something that is running all the time, but can be optimized through the different Samsung settings within uh, with right, actually directly directly from the keyboard. So that's one of the cool things. If you go ahead and you hold function and then you hit F11, you can switch through the modes very easily right from the keyboard deck. So that's a really nice touch, which I like a lot on each of these devices. On the Book 5 Pro 360, there's no longer that button where you can switch through fan modes, which I kind of kind of disappoints me, but you do have quick access by hitting function and F1 to go ahead and jump into the Samsung settings. And at that point, you can scroll down, go to battery life and performance, and then you can go ahead and switch the mode right here inside of the command center. Uh, so there is still a quicker access to your settings, but it's not just a quick tap of the button, so keep that in mind. Now let's go ahead and dive into some benchmarks to really help you know which model is right for you. Now looking at video editing, both the Pro 360 and the Pro really kill it at around the four minute range for a 4K export time and just above a minute for 1080p export time. And that's a nine minute clip placed into Premiere Pro and exported out at full quality settings. Now if you're looking to have an on the go, always ready to crush it video editing laptop to get you from 1080p all the way up to 6K, then I'd recommend the Book 4 Ultra. You're gonna be twice as fast on the 4K export time. And then for the 6K export time, you're gonna be about nine minutes faster compared to the Book 5 Pro and the Book 5 Pro 360 by choosing the Book 4 Ultra equipped with a dedicated GPU. So definitely an advantage with that dedicated GPU. However, as mentioned, you will lose out on battery life. So you have to kind of, you know, pick your battle. Now, keep in mind for playback in Premiere Pro with 6K footage, you can see that there's a little bit of differentiation in the drop frames between the Pro and the Pro 360. This is to do with the CPU. You can see that it's a 256V on the Pro versus the 258V on the Pro 360. However, if you upgrade to the 32 gigs of RAM, you'll not only have more RAM, but you'll also have the 258V, which will provide all the performance that you'll need to equal that of the Pro 360 and even better performance for more multitasking, better performance in Photoshop and video editing versus around 530-ish drop frames for the Book 4 Ultra. But what that means is you can still edit 6K resolution footage choosing the non-dedicated GPU 
equipped models, which is really awesome. Now, you're gonna have much smoother playback for 6K editing, you're gonna have faster export times, but if you wanna be on the go more, then you should choose one of the, either the Book 5 Pro or the Book 5 Pro 360. Remember, the links are in the description below if you want to check the live pricing or make a purchase, as mentioned earlier. If you're somebody considering 3D modeling, there's no question you're going to have to go to the dedicated GPU model. But as I mentioned earlier, don't think that this is going to be your you know, workstation. This is going to be something you're doing some 3D modeling on the go. Because of the 80 watts of maximum graphics power, it's not going to be as powerful as a desktop system or a full-on you know, Legion Pro 7i, as I mentioned earlier, with 175 watts of maximum graphics power. We have to keep our perspective on what this is capable of. On-the-go performance, not on-the-go insane workstation. Now, considering where we're at in, in regards to Photoshop, you can see that across the board, each of these laptops is pretty close in comparison. Now, as I've said, my top recommendation would be the Galaxy Book 5 Pro, being that you can get it in the 32 gig variant and get better performance inside of apps like Photoshop. And also, if you're considering video editing, you don't need the pen compatibility, then I would get the 32 gig model, which will give you better performance inside of Premiere Pro for video editing with the thin and light non-dedicated GPU devices, if you're considering between the Pro and the Pro 360. If I were gonna be considering one of these laptops, since I have a powerful, workstation with an RTX 5090, I would want a laptop that would provide me with on-the-go battery life and great performance. For me, I really don't need the pen compatibility. It's not something that I widely use. I'm not a digital artist as much as I'm a content creator, so I work thumbnails and do some you know, design ins and outs, but I'm not an artist. So what I would do is that I would go ahead and pick up the Book 5 Pro. I'd get it with 32 gigs of RAM, which would give me great battery life and on-the-go video editing capabilities. Now, if you're somebody who wants to do more than just on-the-go video editing, this is gonna be more of your main workstation and you're somebody who's gonna do video editing, you're gonna be doing a little 3D modeling, gonna be doing some motion design, then I definitely recommend having that dedicated GPU, but keep in mind, you will be limiting yourself in regards to battery life if we're comparing between these two, but you'll need that dedicated GPU to get done your tasks on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, if you're a digital artist, I would definitely go for the Pro 360. The pen compatibility is amazing, the touch sensitivity is spot on, and it is absolutely just a fantastic device. Now, you may be asking through the video, why did you not have the Galaxy Book 5 Pro on your desk? Well, it's just easier to show three laptops, especially when the Pro is basically a metamorphosis between these two devices. It's a clamshell laptop, a little bit thinner, and so it just made more sense to keep it simple on my desk. Remember, links in the description if you're going to make a purchase or want to check the live pricing or click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you all in the next one.